Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Casey with Akusha Collectibles. Today we're going to be looking at some coins we're sending off to CAC. I hope you enjoy. Over the past few weeks, Drew and I have been setting aside coins that we thought were good for CAC, fresh coins, stuff that has recently come back from grading, and I think you're going to be blown away by some of the stuff that we've set back and we're sending on behalf of somebody else. As collectors and dealers know, at one point or another, you're going to have to deal with the grading service. So, what Drew and I have been doing lately is comparing the grading services and their performance. Because... Moving forward, we have to think about who's going to get our coins back to us the fastest and who's going to provide the best service for the money. CAC grading is the new kid on the block. Leave some comments below on what you think they should improve on or harp on moving into 2024 because personally, it seems like they're trying to take market share from some of the bigger guys, which isn't a problem. Competition is good. What can they work on? to create somewhat of a competitive edge. We here at Acoustic Collectibles have three things that we want to brag on CAC grading about. The first thing is we can call at any time during their operating hours and they will answer. There is no waiting in the queue for hours at a time. They answer almost immediately. And if they don't answer immediately, they call us back very shortly after. The second thing is turnaround times. Turnaround times have been the bane of Grading existence for a very long time. I think that CAC grading is doing a very good job of turnaround. And personally, I think that that is one of their competitive advantages. Third thing is, with a lot of people looking to be accepted in the CAC grading, they are taking it very serious and they are proactive about getting people on board. We helped a collector friend of ours get accepted in the CAC grading. The process was very seamless and smooth and it was efficient and he said he should be hearing back from them within a few days on the documents that he turned in. So they're actively trying to get people on board and involved. I can't wait to see what CAC grading and CAC stickering has for us in 2024. Okay, I'm done talking you off. Let's get to the coins that we're sending to CAC stickering. All right, guys, the first coin I want to show you is this 1878 CD quarter. It's graded proof 62 cameo by PCGS. Has some nice color to the coin. Does have some intense hairlines in the fields. But for a proof 62 cameo, I thought this one really did hit a lot of the marks. Not sure if they see it the same at CAC in terms of cameo. It's a little bit lighter in my opinion. But we'll love to hear your thoughts down below. I think this one though has a decent shot just from the grade perspective. Next one is this 1916D Barber Quarter. Nice Jemmy, you know, MS65 Luster for sure. Has some hits on the face and a little hit out in the field below its lips. But overall, super flashy, really nice. And this one for me is a 50-50. The next coin is this 1921S, Walking Liberty Half. All of it, this coin comes down to is grade. I think the coin's original. It just depends on what they think the grade might come out to. If it's a, a good for the grade at a VF30 or maybe it should have been a VF25. Not too sure, but a very tough coin to find in mid-grade. The next coin is this 1917D Type 1. Has some nice luster for 65. Has some hits right underneath the T in Liberty, which holds it back a little bit. The strike is strong from what you, from what you can see on the leg. Sometimes they pass wear off as a soft strike, but this coin is all there for the strike. A very lovely coin, and if it passed at CAC, it could add a few hundred dollars in value, which would be pretty cool. So we're definitely going to send this one in and see what they think. If you guys want to check out coins that we have, they're going to be posted on our eBay and on our website, so stay tuned. Watch out for them. We will be uploading them sporadically through this holiday season. Thanks again. Then we have this 1876 
CD half dollar that we're sending in for a friend. Overall, the fields, in my opinion, are nice, but I think the coin for me has turned a little bit too much in terms of its toning. But I've been wrong before, and I'm probably going to be wrong again. So let me know what you guys think of this coin also. But I think the luster is just suppressed too much by the toning, and that might hold it back. Then we have this 1926 two and a half Indian. We just sold one of these the other day, so this one might measure up in terms of the grade and its performance. A lot of the issues sometimes come down to what's above the eagle on the reverse. There's a lot of issues there in terms of hits or scratches that might hold it back. And a lot of it comes down to the strike. When you're looking at uh, the Indian's face and the cheek, this one really looks like a nice strike. Not many issues there. So that one looks pretty good. The collector that we ended up helping said, hey, I'm trying to send in as many coins as possible, but I want to make sure that they're the right ones. And so we help, or just trying to help him out when the ones he thinks are the best. This is a 1935 Spanish Trail commemorative half. Nice toning on both sides of the coin. Is it too gone in terms of its toning? Uh, most of the time with these commemoratives, they were held in cardboard or in, uh, you know, in paper. And so a lot of the toning ends up turning dark or black. And that holds it back from it passing at CEC. This one was really close for it, from it uh, to be turned. And I think this one has a good shot. There's a few little hits in the fields here and there, but very hard to tell and very hard to see. But you can see this big, huge open canvas in terms of fields on this coin. And uh, definitely going to be interesting because we've never actually sent a Spanish trail in to CEC. Up next is this 1877 Carson City CD quarter, very mid state 64. The only issue I have on this coin is the haze that's coming onto the coin. I don't know if that's something that's going to progress and become more and more milky over time, but I do like the coin. I think the strike is strong, and I do think the luster is strong as well. It has a little bit of a toning spot on the reverse. Not sure if it's something that was removed before sending in for grading, and so. Only CEC will let us know in this coin. And so if you guys ever have a question about um, should I send a coin in or not, maybe you should just give it a try and they might surprise you. We have this 1860 Indian head set, Great Mint State 64. Overall, the luster is pretty strong. I like the fields. I love the way that this collector picked out coins because if I saw them, I would send them in also. Then we have this 1926 two and a half Indian, very mid state 61. Overall, I thought this coin was a 62, maybe a 63 in terms of its grade. Don't see too many issues on the coin apart from a little bit of scuffing and scratches above the in, uh, above the eagle on the reverse. But when they're putting these Indians in older holders, they really didn't know how to grade them. And so most of the time they're undergraded and that's where a lot of the gold stickers come from. Then we have this 1929 seated quarter. The luster is really nice. Definitely a gemmy luster. Penn State 63 full head. The strike is strong on, on the head. So that's what's tough, right? So they're saying that the strike was great. It's a full head. If the strike was weak, it wouldn't be a full head. And if you're looking at the leg and you're seeing softness or you're seeing a little bit of rub, they're saying, oh, you know, that could be a softness in the strike. But they're saying the strike is strong at the head. So they're saying two conflicting things here on this coin. And so this coin might be AU. Just something for you guys to consider. But we're going to send this one in and see what CEC thinks anyway. But I do think that there is wear on the leg. And that's what might hold it back from stickering. The last coin I want to show you, which is a beast, is this 1935 Spanish Trail commemorative half in Mint State 67. I mean, just look at these fields. Look how nice and problem-free it is. The strike is really nice. Also, a little toning on the reverse. Definitely an exceptional coin. Can't wait to see what happens with this coin in a few weeks. Thank you guys for taking time out of your week to watch our videos and hear what we have to say. We appreciate you supporting us. We will be grinding all the way through to the end of the year. We will be pumping out as much content as we can. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we are ready to take an adventure with you guys in 2024.